And so I guess what I'm working through right now is, um, so I've mentioned it a lot that I've, you know, dealing with throat, ongoing throat stuff in the midst of my Kundalini awakening. And the initial, I had an initial injury um, that was pretty traumatic and like just bizarre circumstances. And then I had, it finally healed up. And then I had Kriyas that like tilted my head back. And in the moment, I didn't realize it, but it kind of like re-aggravated the injury. And then after that, I was like, hey, Shakti, like, <laughs> I can't be doing that, right? And then um, after that, I taught a yoga class and I was mid yoga class and my voice went out and um, and I lost my voice for about a week. And then ever since then, it's been painful to speak. And I've been writing, you know, I did my like blog and I've been, um, and I've seen ENTs and doctors. And so I'm doing the Western path as well, but it's just been so incredibly humbling. And I'm just wondering if anyone has any ideas of like where I should go from here, because it seemed like to me, like, you know, Shakti or Kundalini, like kind of, this is part of my path, right. And some way that it's shifting me positively is like, you know, I'm trying to be really intentional about what I say. <laughs> um, the mornings I have like the least amount of pain. And then by the end of the day, like I can't, I can't talk. It just is really, really, really painful. Or if I have a day where I'm speaking a lot, I really like pay for it the next day, especially if it's like small talk. Um, and so, yeah, I've just been, you know, wanting to check in with my community, check in with you, Brent, as far as like, you know, does this mean I should be in like a listening introvert? You know, I don't want to socialize because it's extra speaking. And so I'm just really like feeling in, and I've been feeling a lot of energy flowing through me lately, um, just like up and down and all around. And I even had in a meditation one time, it felt like energetic throat surgery, which was wild. <laughs> it was really crazy. Um, but I just don't, I just am humbled by it and it's ongoing and I don't know if it'll ever change. And I just was wondering if anyone has any feedback for me. Yeah. Interesting stuff, Carissa. Thank you for sharing. So from what you've shared just now, and for what I know from our prior conversations, as well as your write-up about your journey, it's very clear to me that you have uh, a calling to express um, in a many different ways, speaking, of course, you mentioned now that you're a yoga teacher. So you're playing the role of guide of teacher. Um, and some acquire the gift. You can say it's a Siddhi, a power, which is eloquence. Now, eloquence can come about spontaneously, but for some, perhaps, um, there's a bit of an initiation into those more eloquent states where we are called to then use the gifts. It seems to me like there's a major theme going on here with your throat chakra. Um, so surrender to the initiation, continue to explore the work with the doctors and whatnot, but it seems very clear that you are called to be one who expresses. Not everybody is called to be that way. Some are meant to serve, right? To, to really serve. Um, I mean, um, you, you'll serve by speaking and, and sharing. I mean, some are meant to serve through service, you know, um, caring for the sick or, or starting some sort of charities and stuff like that. Others are meant to communicate. And uh, it's very obvious that you have those inclinations. Um, you may like this quote. I think it's a Buddhist quote. Do not speak unless it improves on silence. Hmm. Something to consider. Um, hmm. Some different mystics at times would take vows of silence. I think Ramana at one point, uh, he would he would write on a chalkboard and hold the chalkboard up and that's how he would communicate. Um, mm. So it seems that the theme that you're experiencing is not something unheard of or unusual. It can be quite challenging. Mm. Um, explore it from this paradigm, the paradigm of silence. I think you're onto it, you know, mm. uh, being very intentional with what you speak, what you share and speak and using the gift that you have um, to um, for good, for service. What happens, mm. and I don't feel this about you at all, but just speaking in general, some people will have this gift of eloquence, but they are not yet addressed the shadow. And what happens is they essentially, they become maybe a, a politician, a cult leader, something mm. like that. 
So what they're mm. expressing is super clear and exciting and charismatic, but the content of it, it's not for the greater mm. good. It's uh, mm. for their own personal gain. Um, this is why, you know, we see like some dictators and whatnot giving speeches and everyone's getting so fired mm. up. It's, they've got the gift of eloquence, but the content, they haven't yet addressed uh, mm. the shadow behind it. So perhaps mm. just an idea here to consider, perhaps you're getting the full overhaul here so that, you know, when you do become uh, given more and more opportunities to express, you're expressing uh, some some really incredible stuff that many will benefit from. Just some ideas that are coming to me. Maybe you can mm. reflect on them and see uh, how they serve. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Sophie says, Craig Holiday said that the throat chakra is also about the super ego that needs to be in control. It's my case too. The controlling voices of the mind. Hope this helps. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Medina shares here. I also have a super similar experience. I have been called during meditation to take a vow of silence for a month, which starts from today. I don't speak at all and only type when I feel very called to. There's healing that needs to be done there. And by taking this vow of silence, we can allow that to take place on many levels. Mm -hmm. So another idea here is the idea, like in, in Buddhism, we take uh, uh, part of the Eightfold Path is right speech. Right speech. So you may want to look into what right speech is really all about. Um, one part of right speech is not telling lies. Now, we all are liars. Even a slight exaggeration, embellishment, withholding a small detail, it's a lie. So in some respects, you could say we're accumulating karma by uh, um, lying. Taking a vow of silence addresses um, you know, the idea of right speech uh, right off the bat there. It's, it's handled. We're no longer going to lie through our teeth. Um, something to consider. Of course, don't beat yourself up if you're caught exaggerating and whatnot. Um, we all do it, right? It's just it's practical at times just to kind of get our point across and communicate efficiently and effectively and move on. But um, the more that we come onto this path, we have to become very intentional with our words, very, very intentional. Um, and so, you know, it's uh, it's a fine line here that we're walking on. So you can look into that as well, right speech. For those that are interested in Buddhism, uh, the work of Joseph Goldstein is just phenomenal. He doesn't really talk about Kundalini, but he talks about Buddhism in a way that is universal and it will apply to uh, uh, those on the Kundalini path for sure. Um, Joseph Goldstein, Ram Das was, uh, um, you know, his community was growing and he didn't have time, I think. And so he said, hey, Joseph, do you want to teach meditation? to this, you know, my community. And so Joseph got uh, the gig teaching meditation to Ram Das and his Sangha, his community and whatnot. And uh, from there, he has done an incredible work. I'm just going to share the link to his uh, podcast on Spotify. Really soothing voice. For those who are called to explore the path without all the faro phenomena and talking about energy and chakras and this and that, Joseph Goldstein's work is just like super potent, but super practical. Like I said, the stuff that he talks about is like, you know, right speech. You know, we're all lying at times and that causes us to suffer, cause others to suffer. So we'll do our best to, to practice, um, you know, right speech. And he breaks down all the different tenets of Buddhism and, and uh, meditation in a way that's just really practical grounded, um, universal, good stuff. 